Welcome to a video on the transconductance amplifier and we will be discussing the feedback um, in here. Right, so the transconductance amplifier or the series series topology. This is when we take a voltage in and provide a current out. So for a voltage in we need a very large input impedance and for a current out we need a very large output impedance. So with feedback the input impedance should increase and the output impedance should increase. So the gain is in amps per volts, voltage in, current out. The feedback factor will be the inverse of that in volts per amps. Um, we will be using current sampling and that happens in series and voltage mixing which happens in series as well. Right, so the basic setup, two voltages in series can be added together and current is measured in series. So here we can see that the feedback is added to the input here and that we have a continuous loop with a current on the output as well. Right, so everything will happen in series. Now, two basic setups, one with op amp, one with two common source amplifiers. And with a feedback network, you will see that we are pushing a current through a resistor. And if we push a current through a resistor, we generate a voltage. Right? So, Ohm's law, plain straightforward, we have current to voltage conversion happening in our feedback network. Right. Amplifier on this side, what you see here, including this resistor, that is a common source amplifier with the generation that you will have. And since this is the source of a second amplifier, we will be using the transconductance of the second amplifier before driving the load, but this is also a common source um, configuration just using a PMOS. And note that we have no loading factors between the amplifiers. And since if this is ideal op amp, there is no current flowing in back into the amplifier right here. So the rules for the beta network, everything on the input will be summed, everything on the output will be summed, series series. The feedback network itself, we have a current being pushed into this network and a voltage on the other side of the open circuit right here so this is going to remain an open circuit when we want to do the input and output um, equivalents r11 and r2 that will also become an open circuit so you will see that the two networks for r11 and r22 is equivalent so if this is just a single resistor r11 and r22 will be exactly the same value Right, beta network is we are looking for the feedback voltage over the output current and the A network is the output current over the input voltage. Right, so let's do some examples. So first we have op amp going into a PMOS right here. So the op amp has a gain of 200 volts per volts and a differential input impedance of 100 kilo ohms sitting right there. So the input of a voltage amplifier will be taken right there. The output current is flowing through the load on this side right here and it's being driven by this MOSFET which is biased uh, with a 
transconductance of 2 milliamperes per volt. The biasing structure will typically be sitting up there. And the output impedance of this MOSFET is 20 kilo ohms. With this first problem, let's assume that our signal resistor is zero and our load resistor is zero, so that we don't have any influences from then. Then our feedback input and output impedance will be our input and output impedance of our amplifier. Right, so we need to determine the basics and with feedback. So we have a feedback resistor of 200 ohms. Looking at the feedback network, plain straightforward ohms law, VF over I out would be equal to the resistor size. So our beta is our feedback resistor. 200 so 1 over beta would give us our our gain or the gain we're aiming for and 1 over 200 would be 5 milliamps per volt Okay, looking at our feedback network from R11 side and from R22 side, in both cases we are just seeing RF. So instead of using R11 and R22 in these problems, I will be using RF for simplicity. Right. So, input impedance, output impedance. Everything is happening in series. So R in is R sig plus R ID plus R F. So that is our input like that. Our output is the output impedance of this transistor. Or that trick something needs to be sitting up here. Um, so don't worry about it. So we have the output impedance of our transistor plus the load plus RF. Okay, so R sig is zero, R load is zero, so this is 100.2 kilo ohms and 20.2 kilo ohms. Okay, and that's the impedances. The gain of this amplifier, since we should have a voltage in and a current out for um, a transconductance amplifier, we are looking at a voltage going into this amplifier right here, and it is a voltage amplifier with a gain of 200. There is no loading effect, and we can multiply that with the transconductance of our MOSFET. So the gain without loading is AD times GM. Then, for the gain we also need to consider the loading factors. So we want the voltage going into this amplifier. So we have RID. And since everything is in series, it makes it quite easy. We can just say RID over RI. And the same for the current. We want the current which is flowing in the load and also flowing in the feedback resistor right here we don't want the current in the mosfet so with current division r out of a mosfet over all the other impedances right there so this is a voltage divider this is a current divider and it is the most simplistic for this series series configuration Right, so we will have a gain of 395 milliamperes per volt without feedback applied. Applying the feedback, the input impedance should increase, the output impedance should increase. So 1 plus A beta, that's A, that's beta, gives us 8 mega ohms for the input. 
on the output it gives us 1.61 mega ohms and then the feedback gain gives us 4.94 milliampere per volt which is very close to the 5 milliampere that we wanted with our feedback that we chose so 1 over 200 is roughly 5 milli and there we almost have it right and since we had no loadings this is our input impedance of our amplifier and this is the output impedance of our amplifier okay so the transconductance is typically the feedback problem that you hope for in exams because they are quite easy second example right so here we have a uh, common source amplifier with degeneration and then just the transconductance of the second transistor and in this case the feedback resistor is 100 ohms both of these transistors is biased at 5 milliamperes per volt the bias structure is not shown um, will typically be current sources and whatnot and the output impedance of a second transistor is important at 20 kilo ohms right there since it's mosfets there is no loading effects between the two if this was a bjt you need to consider the loading effect as well um, even if this is a bjt then we will have an input impedance but using a mosfet right here our input would be infinite okay so looking at the feedback network it is the same as the first problem just rf is 100 ohms so beta is 100 and then r11 and r22 is both 100 ohms right so input we can sum as much as we want for the input since we have a mosfet here infinite mosfet finished right output impedance would be the resistance of this mosfet plus the load plus r22 that will give us 21.1 kilo ohms and that is the input and output impedance right not having of having infinite input impedance right here we don't have any loading effects going into this amplifier we are going to have to worry about current division and that is kind of uh, the gist of our situation so this first amplifier up here common source with the generation so g minus gmrd over 1 plus gm1rf that is the gain minus 53.33 volts per volts this amplifier providing a current minus gm2 minus 5 milliamperes per volt right so that would be the gain multiply those two and we have this term right here our feedback factor uh, sorry our current division we don't want the current in the MOSFET, we want the current flowing down here, so R out 2 over R out 2 plus RF plus R load, and that is the loading factor on the output side. If somebody were to go and add a biasing resistor here of some sort, that will become your input impedance. Okay, nothing else will be added to that resistor right there okay so our in will be this resistor and not all sum of things like this just as a side note but then you will have loading on the input and you need to do some extra calculations here if there is a rs connected if not who cares right so multiplying everything together 
we get 158 milliampere per volt for our gain. Right, our input impedance remains infinite no matter with how a large or small factor we multiply it here, it will remain infinite. Our output impedance will increase so that becomes 354.5 kilo ohms. Um, jumping to the output impedance, since everything is in series, the load is 1 kilo ohm. The output impedance is just 100 and, uh, sorry, 353.5 kilo ohms. Straightforward like that. So if everything is in series, you do a series. If everything is in parallel, you do a reverse parallel to find that term right the gain with feedback applied 9 milliampere per volt and that's it that is it for transconductance amplifiers or the series series configuration as I said, this is the simplest one of uh, the four topologies. Right, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.